Good morning, men, and our new life. It is such a joy and privilege to bring God's word to you today. For those that don't know me, I actually used to be part of Manukau New Life. My dad, David McCracken, founded it in February 1973. I was born in April 1973. And for the first 19 and a half years of my life, Manukau New Life was my home. I had the privilege of, in my teenage years, growing up with Pastor Stephen and Pastor Susie. I honor them as a man and woman of God. I commend them to you. I have such a joy and privilege to be part of your family. And so today, I am really stirred by what God has placed upon my heart for you. I pray you open up your heart. And hey, why don't we just step into the presence of God in prayer and ask the Holy Spirit to speak and bring revelation to us. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come come boldly. We come boldly before your throne of grace and we say, we love you, my wonderful Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for revelation truth. We thank you for your purpose and for your destiny, for your call, for your plan, for planet earth of which we get to be a part. Lord, I thank you that the church is the bride of Christ, the body of Christ. It is the army of the living God. And we thank you again that we are part of that at this time in history, Lord, where there is so much happening in the world in the natural sense and, and so much of it is challenging and we pause and we stop and we acknowledge your lordship and your sovereignty and we thank you right now that you are not caught by surprise Lord God you are not unaware of what you are doing Lord you have a plan Lord, you started a plan and you're going to bring it to completion. We release it over the nation of New Zealand right now. Come on, church. We release it, Lord, your plans and your purposes, that they will come to pass the things that you prophetically declared. We add our amen to it in Jesus' name. We pray for the nation of New Zealand and indeed for the nation of Australia. God, that these two nations, these twin nations, these cousin nations of God will be a beacon of light to the world at this time. Time. I pray for Manukau New Life for a stirring up in the spirit of all the things that have been spoken from years ago and indeed in the original plan of God and we say let it be in Jesus name. Holy Spirit flow in our midst. Let us feel your presence. Lord I release healing when healing is needed. Right now I, I release restoration where restoration is needed. We're asking for the power of the Holy Ghost to be present, the presence of God to be tangible. In Jesus' name, let your word all be illuminated with truth and revelation right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen, amen, amen. Hey, Pastor Stephen and Pastor Susie, I just want to affirm in the spirit your apostolic call, your gift, the grace of God upon your life as sent ones, as ambassadors. Uh, this is the mandate upon your life and I just saw in the spirit another three campuses and I know in the natural now is not the time <laughs> to think about that right now is the time if we could have one campus get together we'd be blessed and honored but how many people are glad that God is not dictated to by what's happening in the environment in fact he is the sovereign God and I just see another three campuses I want to release that in the spirit amen Pastor Stephen called me last week and we were talking, he asked me to share and he was bubbling over with this word revival and often when I come to a church it's not based on a word or a theme, it's whatever God is downloading but it absolutely exploded into my spirit and so I want to just read through and, and teach and preach and prophetically declare what I felt in the spirit about revival. Revival by its very definition is not about a new thing happening. I pray you open up your heart right now to the spirit. There's a lot of talk at the moment about a new normal and a new way of doing things. Right now when we come out of this time of COVID-19 which has really put the world on pause, on hold and sometimes if we're not careful we will believe that God's plans are on pause. I declare by the Spirit of the Living God that God's plans are never on pause. They are never, He is never caught by surprise. He always has a plan and He has a plan for this season right now. 
we're in lockdown, a stage four lockdown in Melbourne. Uh, you guys, I think, are not quite at that stage, but you guys are also in restrictions. And we sometimes think that God is restricted, that God is locked down. His plans and purposes are on pause until we can get out and get on with what God has called us to do. I declare in the Spirit that is not the case. God is doing a lot right now around the world. The Spirit of God is doing more than any coronavirus is doing. The Spirit of God is moving. And right now, uh, I do believe that God's doing something in the season. And from the season, I do think that things will look different. A 100%, there is going to be a new normal. There is going to be a new way of doing things. But I need you to hear what I'm about to say as we start to download this. Revival. Revival. We cry out for revival. We pray out of this that there will be a revival. And so do I. But hear me from the start. Revival will not happen when God does a new thing. But it, revival will happen when God's people return to what God originally intended. The new normal that everyone's talking about in church life and in the world is actually a return to God's original. Let me say it again. The new normal is a return to God's original. And this is the essence of revival. God spoke to me and said, we have confused the fruit of revival with the essence of revival. Stay with me here. The fruit of revival the fruit of revival is that great outpouring of the Holy Spirit that we is synonymous with revival. The signs, the wonders, the miracles, the mass um, salvations, the transformation of society throughout history when there's been revivals. That has been what is synonymous with revival. We gave, that is revival. God says, no, that's the fruit of revival. The essence of revival is actually God's people returning for God to God's original way of living as sons and daughters of the Most High God. It's a return to God's plan, to prayer, to holiness, to righteousness. Uh, Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, when God said this to me, He, he just dropped this verse into my spirit. It's such a well-known verse. Maybe you've heard of it. And maybe it's even been prayed over your nation at this time. It says, if my people who are called by my name, Second Chronicles seven fourteen, if my people who are called by my name, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. And we cry out and we say, God, do it again, God. Would you hear from heaven? God, would you forgive the sins of uh, our sins and the sins of this nation? Would you heal our lamb? Would you bring transformation? Would you bring revival? And when we see God moving in the nation and all these things starting to change, we say revival has come. That's revival. And God said to me, no, that's the fruit of revival. The essence of revival in this passage is God's People, if they will humble themselves, if they will pray, if they will seek my face, if they will turn from the wicked ways, if they will come back to me as their greatest priority, that is by its very definition revival. And then there will be a fruit of revival, and we will celebrate the fruit and call it revival, but the revival is the returning. We have got to be careful that we're not changing chasing the fruit of revival as revival and never actually getting it because we're not actually stepping into revival. Let me define revival just for a moment before I just want to talk about six things that God wants revived. Revival, by this very definition, is a restoration to life. Or consciousness. Think about someone that is passed out there, uh, unconscious. They may have even passed away. And people perform CPR on them. People uh, work on them. And they are revived. Oh, they are revived. What is it? They have come back to It's not a new thing. They're not stepping into something new. They're coming back to life. It is an, an instance of something becoming popular, active, or important again. Hear it again, as, as a restoration, as again, it is a reawakening of religious fervor, of spiritual 
passion and pursuit. This is revival. Revival is not a new thing. It is a return to God's original. So what has what is God's status, a stated purpose and plan for His church of which you and I are a part? What does God want us to come back to? Well, I want to give us six things. None of these are new things because they're not meant to be. <laughs> this is about us coming back. Oh, and if the church comes back to this in this new season, then revival, as we would define it, will happen. But it is the fruits of the revival that happens in us. The first thing is this, a return, a revival to first love. A revival of first love. That, that probably doesn't surprise you, but oh, how we need to hear God's word. Revelation chapter 2, verse 2 through to verse 5. This is... Uh, talking to the church in Ephesus. This is the revelation that John received from Jesus Christ to the church in Ephesus. Can I give it to the church? Maybe a man account in your life. Maybe myself. Maybe you personally. This is for me and you personally. I know your deeds, your hard work, your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not, and you have found them false. You have persevered, and you have endured hardships for my name. And you have not grown weary. Come on, this is a great commendation. This is, you, you, you are passionate, and you're pursuing the, the things of God, and you're disciplined, and you're, and you're not giving up, and you hate the things that wicked people do. This is a great commendation. But then we find ourselves in verse 3, and Jesus says, Yet I hold this against you. I have a problem with this. You have forsaken the love that you had at first. Notice he didn't say, I have this against you. You're not stepping into the new things. You're not laying hold of the new things. That's not what he said. You've actually forsaken the love that you had at first. Important. Consider how far you have fallen. But hang on. You said we're doing all these good things. Yeah, but we were created for this love relationship. That is the most important thing. Everything else flows from that, but whenever it supersedes that or replaces that, God says, man, we've fallen a long way. It's time to come back. Repent and do the things that you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. This is important to Jesus. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32 and 33, 34, it says, remember those earlier days. Remember, it said, come back. Come back to this first love. Now, remember those earlier days after you had just received the life, after you had just been born again. Remember those days when your passion was high. You were so in love with God because you had a revelation of who He is and how He had changed your life. You were so in love that when you endured a great conflict uh, and full of suffering, sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution, maybe from family and friends and workmates. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. Why? Because you knew that you yourselves had a better and a lasting possession. This place, this home was temporary. You're going to spend eternity with God, but right now you are rejoicing in this newfound relationship with the God who is love. The word of the Lord to the church is return to first love. That is the first thing that needs to be revived. The second thing is a return to prayer, a revival of prayer. I felt the Holy Spirit say, your prayers are too small. That was the statement he said to me. Your prayers are too small. I, I feel it on two levels. Uh, let me read the scripture first. Matthew 21 Verse 13, it says, It is written, Jesus said to them, that my house will be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of robbers. My house will be called a house of prayer. The identification mark of my house, my people, my church, is that they are a praying 
people. They are our praying people. One of the only things that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them to do was to pray. Not how to pray, but actually to pray. This is a time where prayer in the people of God needs to be revived. There needs to be a revival of prayer, of first love and of prayer. The centrality of prayer needs to come back to our lives. And I do feel that God said your prayer room is too small. When you come back as a church, I, I feel physically a uh, room that God says, I want to enlarge the place where you pray. I want more people in the prayer room and I want more prayer in my people. More people in the prayer room and more prayer in my people in your individual life. Right now, maybe you can't get out and about. Maybe you got more free time. Maybe Netflix uh, is getting a, a right royal workout and you're saturating yourself and that's okay to watch stuff and relax. I do too. But I want if God is giving us an opportunity to pray more than ever not out of religious duty but out of first love out of this all oh, this love two way relationship with God coming back to the original thing where we walk with God in the cool of the day we walk with God we listen to him we talk to him we're transparent with him we're honest with him this is a time to return to prayer there's some people right now listening to this a stirring in your spirit yeah, I want to do that. God says, pick it up today. Pick it up today. The third thing is a return to being a follower of Jesus Christ. You might say, of course, we're Christians. We're followers. I'm not talking about being a Christian. I'm talking about being a follower of Jesus Christ. This is revival. And this will relate in, a, in the result of revival that we want to see in our nation. Matthew 16, 24 then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple. Do you want to be my disciple, Jesus is saying? Then you must deny yourself, take up your cross and actually follow me. What did Jesus say when he, when he called the disciples? It, it wasn't about come and be involved in what I'm doing in my religious institution. Come and be involved in all that I'm doing, the plans and the meetings and, and the programs and events. No, it was simply two words, follow me. The call has not changed. And following Jesus actually denotes that Jesus is the leader, not just the Savior. There are too many Christians that are so grateful that Jesus saved them, but we are really, truly not following Him. Following Him where He leads. He is the one leading. He's not the leader if we're not following Him. And we're not following if He's not truly the leader. And Jesus said it this way, not my will, but yours be done. If you declare it, I am going to do it. In Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, before Jesus went back, we know the Great Commission. But there's a part that Jesus really highlighted to me as I was praying. And it says in verse 18 to 20 of Matthew 28, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority on heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now he's given it to us, Luke 10, 19 tells us. Therefore I want you to go and make disciples, come on, pupils, students of Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Watch, and teaching them to actually obey everything God I command obey everything I command they must actually follow what I say not just applaud it not just celebrate it not just say good word pastor oh that's wonderful I feel good but actually do want Jesus Christ there is a time where God is reviving the church to obedience this is the essence of being a disciple and being a follower of Jesus Christ and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age in John 15 verse 14 Jesus made it clear he says you are my friends if you actually do what I command this is time to revive to first love to prayer and to actually following Jesus but the, the fourth one is this and it's very much linked to following Jesus but it it's it's a statement God said to me and so I want to download it specific and separate it's actually time to return to God's standards. How many people know that the nation of New Zealand and indeed the nation of Australia need to return to God's standards? But how many also know that it needs to happen in the church? Can we be honest, please, people? We need to really stop, pause, settle. Let me make the statement that he said to me. What God calls sin is sin. And what God calls good is good. Man does not define what is good and what is evil. The government does not define what is good and evil. 
The television does not define what is good and evil. What is accepted in culture does not define what is good and evil. There needs to be a reviving, a revival, a returning, a restoration to God's standards. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3, the prophet Isaiah wrote, this Isaiah 2 verse 3, many people will come and say, listen to this, this is powerful. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Come on, let's make an effort. Let's go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the temple of the God of Jacob. Let's go and meet with God. And there he will teach us his ways. Oh, praise God. So that we, the church, the people of God will walk in his Past. It starts in the church, not in the world. He will teach us His ways. He will not just affirm our ways and confirm our ways. He will teach us His ways and we will walk in His past. And then the law will go out from Zion. The word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Zion is a picture of the church and it says the law will go out. But it says that after Him teaching us. The church's ways and us walking. When we walk in his ways, then the law, what is right and what is wrong, will go out from the church. Hear me, church. While the government determines the legal laws of a country, it is the church, the Zion's responsibility and calling to set the moral laws of a nation but the setting of the moral laws is not by decree but by example oh holy ghost i pray there will be a revival to god's standards what would happen if we live like jesus if we love like jesus if we spoke like jesus Oh, oh God, help us as we interact on social media like Jesus would interact, as we prayed for our leaders, as we loved our enemies, as we do good, and as we feed the poor, and as we meet people's needs, as we testify to the goodness of the Father. It's a time to restore to God's standards, and what He calls holy is holy, what He calls unholy is unholy. Number five, a return to visible love. God spoke this phrase to me when actually when I was talking to Pastor Stephen, that love looks like something. John 3, 16, we know, for God so loved the world that he actually gave his son. It looked like something. It wasn't God so loved the world that he just stayed in heaven. No, he gave his one and only son. And I saw for you as a church, I see you meeting practical needs and feeding those who are hungry. And I saw it combined with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I saw many of you doing this. I saw multitudes and groups of you doing this. There is going to come a great marrying of meeting the practical needs and the spiritual needs at the same time the love is going to be visible and finally i see a return to living by divine command genesis chapter 1 verse 26 to 28 sorry i just want to correct that a return to living by divine commission divine commission divine commission god giving us a plan and purpose genesis chapter 1 Verse 26 to 28, it says, Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky. They may rule over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image, in his own likeness. That's what we are created in. That was the plat pattern and the plan set up. That was what the original intention of God was, that we were in the image of God. He created the male and female. He created them. And God blessed them and said, now be fruitful and multiply what? Not natural reproduction, but spiritually reproduce the image of God. You were created in my image. Now you begat that. Now you reproduce the image of God. That's God's original commission. And also fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over come on we take dominion over why because we are in the image of god that was god's original commission but just five chapters later genesis chapter 5 verse 1 to 3 let me read this and i'm about to finish this is a written account of adam's family line when god created mankind listen 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 God's original commission, when God created mankind, He made them in the likeness of God. That was the commission. You made in my likeness, now be fruitful and multiply my image. He created the male and female. He blessed them. 
He made them mankind when he created them. Verse 3, when Adam had lived 130 years, he had a son in his own image and likeness. Hang on, whoa, 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 whoa. We were meant to reproduce God's image and likeness. We were meant to beget that. We were meant to reproduce that. But it says he had a son in his image, in his likeness, and he named him Seth. The word Seth means a substitute, compensation. Oh, I want you to hear the word of the Lord. We will either live by God's original commission, actually reproducing the image of God through our life into other people's life. That we are living like Jesus. We are in first love and prayer. We are living and following Jesus Christ. We are actually living by God's standards. That we have a we have a visible love, and as a result, we are reproducing disciples, followers of Jesus in the image of God. We will either live by God's original commission or by our compensation. We will do other things to try to make up for it. We will try to do things to make up for what we've done wrong. We will do things to make up for why we're not doing what God called us to do because it's too hard. And I want to call the church of Jesus Christ back to the fact that we need a revival to come back to God's original commission and to come back to God's ways. This is revival. Not a new thing, a new normal, but a return to God's original. My final question is this. What does God want to revive to healthy function in your life in this season? What does God want to bring you back to so that it's healthy and it's functioning in this season? I pray the Spirit of God is speaking to you and will continue to speak to you. I want to pray for you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I release the Spirit of God to bring revelation and revival to your people and to your church. God Almighty, I pray for an open heaven. And I pray, Lord Jesus Christ, for the blessing of God to be on Manichael New Life, on them and through them, for the glory of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to finish and just commend to you uh, prophetic supplements just at David McCracken Ministry. Our website um, is such a resource center. If you want to learn how to hear from God, how to stir up the prophetic, there's articles and blogs and videos, everything on there. And my daily devotional, Believing in You. I want to feed you and encourage you and stir you. There's YouTube, there's Instagram, prophetic statements and videos. I encourage you to avail yourself of them. Why? So that you can be stirred up in your most holy faith and be blessed and be a blessing. Church, I love you. I commend you to the Spirit of God and the work of God in your life and through your life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bless you.